Hello guys, and welcome to Barking Mad Tech, an extremely low effort and extremely low budget tech channel dedicated to bringing you only the best in bad tech content. My name is Nick, and today's video will be the first on the channel, and so I have a sort of primer or mission statement uh, for what I want this channel to be about, and that's computer parts. Simple as that. Mainly uh, budget or and used computer parts with some new and more high-end stuff thrown in here and there. Uh, and with this hardware we'll be building PCs and flipping them, or we'll be just taking longer looks back at hardware that maybe didn't get the attention or the love it deserved in its own time. And just see what that can do nowadays with uh, modern games and uh, with more, with new and perhaps more challenging scenarios. Uh, today though, we'll be taking a look at some PC hardware deals that I've scored during uh, this month, which would be November 2019. Uh, and we've got some uh, used stuff, we've got some new stuff that's got on Black Friday, and all sorts of stuff. So without further ado, just, just let's just take a look at all that hardware that I've got. So to begin with, uh, we've got some used hardware that I scored from a friend of mine who's actually also just starting out in the garbage tier tech tuber game. Uh, his channel name is Snekit. Uh, and I'll leave uh, a link to his channel in the description um, uh, to this video. Uh, and he's recently been doing a series where he upgrades and modifies an old Alienware desktop from about 2009 or something like that. And in the course of doing that series, he actually uh, upgraded uh, his personal rig, his machine, and he wants to offload some of his old hardware. And that's where I come in. So we've got here uh, a nice little Mini ITX case. I think it's a Cooler Master Release 120. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit banged up and I've tried to clean it a little bit, but you can definitely use some more, which I will definitely do before I try to flip this or anything else. Got some nice stickers there. It's a pretty nice Mini ITX case. And you know, I got it with some other stuff, so I'm not, I'm not gonna complain about it at all. It's missing. Uh, a bay cover here, but I can just put an obstacle drive or something like that in there. Or if I happen to have just a, a bay cover lying around, I'll just put, put that there so it's not just a big ugly gap. Uh, we've also got the a nice Minitex motherboard. It's a, a B250i Gaming Pro AC from uh, MSI. Uh, you know, it's it's a pretty bog standard, but quite nice Minitex motherboard for what it is. Uh, it's B250 chipset. Uh, so, you know, it's, it supports uh, KB Lake and uh, Sky Lake processors. It's got built in AC Wi Fi, which for a Minitex board nowadays I think it's just pretty much a given, but still pretty nice to have. Uh, speaking of uh, KB Lake uh, CPUs, we've got here, we've got the. Uh, let's see if I can try and get this focused properly so you can actually see what it says. It's a Core i5 uh, 7400, which is a 3 gigahertz 4 core 4 thread processor and nowadays uh, you know that's not amazing by any means uh, seeing that we've seen games uh, especially take more and more advantage of wider CPUs uh, that's to say more CPU threads so these older Core i5 are starting to uh, struggle a little bit uh, nowadays but for the right price it's not that bad uh, and then we've got here a, a single 8 gig stick of DDR4 2400, it's a Corsair Vengeance LPX stick. Uh, now, Snakeit wasn't sure this actually worked because he was saying he had some uh, he had some blue screening issues with the that seemed to be fixed by uh, changing to other RAM. Uh, but I've been running it. You know, I, I ran mem tests for a few hours and didn't get any errors. So then I figured, okay, maybe it just doesn't play well with the uh, BIOS of the MSI B250. Or maybe it just doesn't play well with this processor for for some reason or other. But then you know I updated the BIOS, I ran Prime 95, and I could not replicate the blue screening issues he was having. So as far as I'm aware, this is just a fully functioning stick of DDR4, which is quite nice. And we've got an Intel stock cooler, which yeah. <laughs> anyway, here we have a, a really nice score. I think it's a. Fractal Design Integra M 550W power supply. It's uh, semi-modular, uh, 80 plus bronze certified, 
Uh, and yeah, like 550 watts is enough for a very wide range of hardware all the way up into the high end. So I'm very happy with this. This is a really nice power supply. And now for the big dog. This is a Asus ROG Strix 980Ti. I remember back when this card came out, I desperately wanted one, but just I couldn't afford it at the time. It was, it was almost five years ago now, isn't it? And like, while it's not certainly not the, the best of the best anymore, it's still a really great uh, graphics card, especially for ultra 1080p gaming, even at high refresh rates. So this is still a really great card. It more or less matches a GTX 1070. It's better in some titles, slower in others. Uh, so it's, yeah. And considering... Yeah, it's just, this is a great card. I'm very happy that I finally have one. Uh, so what did I pay for all this uh, from Snackage? Well, I got it all for 2,000 Swedish crowns, which I think works out to just under 210 US dollars. And considering that at least here, the 980 Ti alone goes for about that, I am very happy that I got all this for just 2,000 Swedish crowns. But that's not all. We've also got some stuff that I got from free, through some contacts at a local PC repair shop. And what happens at this repair shop is sometimes, you know, customers, they come in, they want the stuff upgraded or, or repaired, and there's hardware left over that they don't really want back. Uh, and then I often get an opportunity to either buy it cheap or get it for free. In this case, I've just gotten it for free. So we've got a two by eight gigabyte kit of DDR3, HyperX Savage, nice red gamery uh, <laughs> heat spreaders. And it's, it's 2400 megahertz, which is about as fast as it gets for DDR3. So that's pretty damn nice, and it's 16 gigs. So, you know, you can always find a use for DDR3, especially when you're dealing with huge stuff. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. And then we've got this uh, GTX 960 2 gigabyte from some old OEM machine. This I'm not actually totally sure it works. So I'm going to test this out. And if it works, I'm definitely going to do something with it. Because, like, it's, this is still a decent card for, like, lower-end 1080p gaming. And uh, last but not least, we've got some completely new stuff that I got over Black Friday. <laughs> and this is all going into an upcoming uh, Minetex gaming computer that I'm building sometime in December, if it all goes well. So first of all, we've got a three pack of uh, Corsair LL120 RGB fans. It is just gorgeous and really well performing fans. And I just love them. I saw they were on sale, so I picked them up. And this pack actually includes the Lightning No Pro, which you do need to control the RGB through Corsair's IQ software, which while clunky and kind of half semi bloatware, just really has some really nice lighting effects and stuff. And yes, I like RGB. I am that person. Uh, and then we have uh, a kit of a 2 by 8 kit of DDR4 3200. It's Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. Uh, it's as I said, it's 3200 megahertz. It's CL16, so it's not it's not the fastest for a Ryzen 3000 build, which is what I'm going to be putting these into. But as far as I've been given to understand, these are actually quite decent overclockers. So I'll see if I can get this up to 3600, and if I can't. The 3200 megahertz CL16 is still fine. It's not gonna be horrendous or anything like that. So I'm very happy with that as well. And it's again Corsair and RGB because I like both Corsair and RGB. And finally, we've got uh, what I'm really, really happy about is this uh, Corsair SF600. Uh, it's a really nice little SFX power supply. It's fully modular, comes with. Uh, fully individually sleeved uh, cables. It's 80 plus platinum efficiency, if you can believe that. That's definitely the highest end power supply I've actually ever owned. Uh, 600 watts is enough wattage for basically anything nowadays. And it's just, it's absolutely tight, it's adorable. And they actually include like an adapter bracket so you can put it in to just any uh, ATX case. So you don't have to get rid of this if you would just upsize to a, a full ATX case. Uh, in the future, uh, but that's very nice indeed. I'm very happy about this. And for this, I paid 2,727 uh, Swedish crowns, which works out to about 285 US dollars, I think. And since we're in Sweden, that definitely includes uh, VAT or sales tax or whatever. Like we, th that's all included. 
Uh, so that's pretty nice. I saved about a thousand Swedish crowns. I think, I think I actually got it cheaper at for at the time than it was available for in the US. But I'm not I'm not entirely sure. So I'm definitely very happy about all of this. Well, I hope, hope you've all enjoyed this little haul video or whatever. Uh, my next one will hopefully be a bit more substantive. I am going to be uh, building a PC and then flipping it. Uh, it's going to be built out of used hardware. Uh, so that should be coming out fairly soon. I can't say exactly when, but hopefully next weekend. And uh, yeah, so keep an eye out. Uh, that's it for me. Peace out.